Hello, my name is Ray Poole. I'd like to tell you about a music collection I assembled called Hymns and Harmony. It's a fake book. That means it provides a minimum of information for a broad range of performance possibilities. A fake book gives a melody line with chord symbols above the staff and lyrics below. You can play a piece as a solo. You can accompany a singer or another instrument. You can play along in an ensemble. The final performance is up to the taste and the ability of the player. Here's a sample fake book layout. There's only one line of music, the melody. The chords are indicated above the line when they first sound and then when they change. If there's no new chord symbol, the same harmony lasts for multiple beats or even multiple measures until a new chord symbol is written. If there are lyrics, they're written below the staff. Hymns and Harmony contains 100 hymns that are common to the most recent hymnals of Roman Catholic, Episcopal, Presbyterian, Methodist, Congregational, and Lutheran denominations. Not every tune is in all six hymnals, but many are. They are referenced at the bottom of each entry. There are four index listings, alphabetical by tune name, alphabetical by first line of text by the five levels of music complexity, and by key signature. Additionally, there are 13 pages of harmonic studies and performance suggestions. In category A, each melody note is either the root, third, or fifth of a chord on one, four, or five. Our first example is in the key of G major. Notice the melody note on top and the harmony tones beneath. To begin with, play the melody with the right thumb only. I'll tell you why in a moment. By going outside the confines of traditional harp technique, this helps to study the exact shape of the melody from note to note. The right thumb will always play the melody note as the lower fingers play the harmony tones of the chord symbol. Let's see how that works. Always spell the chord in root position and include any accidentals from the key signature. D in a G, B, D. G in a G, B, D. B in a G, B, D. G in a G, B, D. B in a G, B, D. A in a D, F sharp, A. G in a C, E, G. E in a C, E, G. D in a G, B, D. Play these melodic triad inversions in just the right hand. One, two. Then, double the left hand one octave lower for a much richer sound. Or, Play melodic triad inversions in the right hand and a single bass note on the downbeat in the left hand as indicated by the arrow. One, two.
The choices are up to you according to your level of ability, personal taste, and musical requirement. If you need more harmony study, please consult my video, Three's Accord, on this same channel. In category B, all seven of the diatonic triads in the key signature may be used in any inversion. Our next example is in the key of F major. Here are the triads in that key. One, F major. Two, G minor. Three, A minor. Four, B flat major. Five, C major. 6 D minor, and 7 E diminished. Let's cut to the chase and look at the most complex hymn in the collection in terms of diatonic dryads. Lobedain Heron, Praise to the Lord. Play the melody line with the right thumb only. Notice there are no chords at this point. One, two, Three. This first line contains every chord in the key signature. This is why harmony study is such an important foundation for lead sheet playing. These chords are totally notated in the early pages of the book. Let's see them in use in this melody. Spell the melody note and name the harmonic tones of each chord symbol. Always spell the chord in root position. Notice the tied note and how it is treated. F in an FAC. F in a DFA. C in a C E G, A in an F A C, G in a C E G, F in a D F A, E in an A C E, D in a B flat D F, C in an F A C, D in a B flat D F, E in an flat, F in a D, F, A, G in a G, B flat, D, and only the two harmony tones of C major in a C, E, G, F in an F, A, C. You've played every chord in the key of F major in this one line. When you double the hands, it's extremely rich. Category C adds a four-note chord on the fifth step of the scale. It's a combination of a major triad and a minor seventh. In the key of G, it's a D major triad and a minor seventh up to C in the melody. This is simply called the dominant seventh. It occurs on the fifth step of the scale in every major key. It's a very powerful sound. All of the other diatonic triads remain the same. This hymn is named in honor of William Chatterton Dix. The second measure indicates a four note chord D7 with C in the melody. It's spelled D F sharp A C. The harmony notes are shown below 
at a reduced size. All other chords are simple, melodic, triad inversions as usual. Listen to how it sounds with one hand. doubled. It's a very satisfying sound in this simple fashion. In category D, we encounter notes that are not part of the current chord symbol. They're called non-harmonic tones. They're either passing tones going up or down the scale, or neighboring notes that begin on a pitch and go to the nearest note either above or below returning to the original pitch. All the previous harmonic elements are required as well. Balm in Gilead, at number one, uses the pitch of G as a lower neighboring note. Number two shows a passing tone going down the scale, and number three is a passing tone going up. Let's play the melody and chords in one hand only. The notes indicated by the numbers one, two, and three are sounded by themselves with no other harmony tones. Notice the chord symbol of F major lasts for three and one half measures. Ready, play. The non-harmonic tones, the passing tones and neighboring note, are played only in the right hand. It's not necessary to have any other notes placed beneath them. Let's double the hands and play this phrase again, listening to the single non-harmonic tone. Category E includes chords that require an accidental. For lever harp, the simplest treatment is to omit the altered note. It will still be implied in the harmony. Play a D7 chord without an F sharp as D, A, C. Play an E7 chord without a G sharp as E, B, D. The indication of no third is given above the line for lever harp. Pedal harp will make the change as usual indicated below the line. Pedal harp will play all four notes. Here is the last line of Adeste Fidelis, O Come All Ye Faithful. This melody uses an A7 at the end of the first full measure. For lever harp, the indication no third is written above the line. For pedal harp, the required pedal movement of C sharp is given below the line as usual. The letters N, C on the next to the last note mean no chord. <laughs> Thank you.
If a hymn tune has an accidental in the melody, in order to play it accurately, a lever must be moved. These hymns are indicated as E with a star in the index. Only 15 out of the 100 hymns have this requirement. An example occurs in Eventide, more well known as Abide With Me. This melodic accidental only happens once in the hymn. Double the hands to find where it is necessary to accommodate the lever movement, playing the F major chord in the right hand only. In summary, this very basic approach to combining a melody note with harmony tones while doubling the left hand an octave lower provides a very direct and substantial performance. There's power in the combination of the two elements of melody and harmony. With good rhythm, this is all that's needed for a very successful delivery of a hymn tune. Before playing, think, what would you like to hear? then make it happen. Hymns and Harmony, 100 hymn tunes in lead sheet format. Thanks for watching.